so we know who is who uh, apart from the names and what stream are they coming from and what Absolutely. are they studying that's great great so great to see and meet me to actually all of you guys uh, let me just switch on my video here and then i'll talk to you guys for a bit and take some questions and then we can kick it off uh, so welcome to this session as uh, rohit and uh, and everybody else mentioned this is going to be a session on uh, discussing how to build better portfolios uh, i'll be going through a few of your uh, chosen ones uh, the guys and the uh, folks who have been selected to have their portfolios reviewed uh, take it with a pinch of salt because uh, you might get uh, uh, you might get these scenarios in the real world when you come across a recruiter who's not so nice as i'm going to be today or you might come across a certain set of requirements which uh, you already feel that you're comfortable with but you're not being able to show across in your portfolio so we look at certain scenarios we look at uh, <clears throat> excuse me certain aspects of how you can build a better uh, working portfolio and i believe all of you folks are in your final year right so you'll be going out and meeting the real world and applying for jobs pretty soon is that correct anyone yes, anyone Cool, cool. Have uh, campus placements and stuff like that. Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, good. Interesting. Nice to hear that. So I hope uh, and, and thank you, Anna, for that brief introduction. I, I, I'm sure you, um, you, some of you guys must know me. Some of you, I must have met at some uh, design conference or the other. But I'm very happy to be here and talk to you guys about how to build a better portfolio. Having said that, let me just uh, start sharing my screen and we'll jump into it right away. Just give me a second here. Are you guys are able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Great. All right. So today we'll uh, look at some ways of enhancing uh, portfolios. All right. And when we say portfolios and enhancement, we look at some ways about how we can make them more socially acceptable with recruiters. Uh, recruiters are the people who you, who you guys are going to be meeting uh, in a couple of months, couple of weeks when you start hunting for jobs and when you get out of university with your awesome design degrees right so let's take a look at how we can make it more socially acceptable with recruiters in other words what makes up a good portfolio getting an obligatory disclaimer and statutory warning out of the way so everybody just stay calm and keep your mute on uh, to set things straight there are portfolios and then there are resumes and cvs right anyone care to tell me the difference between these two and, and now you can unmute if you want to answer so anybody wants to take this and tell me what's the basic difference between a portfolio and a resume or a CV? Sir, portfolio is more about the work we have done and uh, uh, to show what, how we work, how we do our projects. And uh, resume or CV are uh, what all we have learned, what courses did we take and things like that. Yeah. Uh, nicely said. So a resume is basically a summary of whatever you've achieved in your life based on the skills that you've gathered based on the experiences that you've accumulated at the places that you worked. And a portfolio is a showcase of all the work that you've done so far. Now work, when you say showcase of work, it can mean two things, right? It can mean a personal work portfolio. If I'm an artist, I have a lot of work that I do for myself. I don't do it for any particular client, right? And then there is the professional portfolio, which involves a lot of work, which I do for my clients, which I've done across uh, different areas of my job profile, different uh, places or companies that I've worked at, or even different locations or geographies that I've been to. So these two differences have to be very clear when you're starting to build or starting to complete or polish up your portfolio. And when we say that, that there, there are two different types, there is the resume kind, there is the splashy eye candy design type portfolio, which is also good in a way. Sometimes some of them are also disguised as Behance sites or a personal website or even tucked away in some links on your CV, right? So there are different aspects, different form factors, different ways of looking at what can be a portfolio. But keep in mind that both have a target audience, audience in mind, right? And both should be speaking the language of the viewer, which is very, very important. So one of the critical things that you need to keep in mind is who is going to look at this portfolio? Who is this for? Is it just meant 
as an awesome eye candy brochure full of good designs that I've made for myself and for my family and for my close friends? Or is it meant to get me a job? Right? Once you get the idea of figuring out who your design audience is, you'll be able to target the messaging and the content more properly. Right? So the first thing, one of the first things actually that recruiters will want to see from your portfolio is what area or areas of design you specialize in. So they can quickly judge whether you fit in with a particular position that's available or not. You might think then that including a little bit of everything will help your cause, right? But no, that shows a lack of focus and you'll be starting to get a lot of drop-offs. Employers will dismiss your portfolio and move on to the next one. I personally used to walk around with an 11-pager CV and now I rely only on LinkedIn for that part. So my resume is now shortened down to a profile page on LinkedIn and everything else is part of something which I choose to disclose with my clients or not, right? So think carefully about where your passions truly lie and what kind of work you really want to do in the future. Then you should carefully curate your work to sell that particular version of you. It's the version that employers are most likely to react to positively. As you can see out here, I've just put in a very small card, which is not too flashy, not too loud, but it just gives a clear and concise message as to what my skills are and what I'm committed to doing, right? So you should, you should use formats like these to talk about what is your area of speciality, right? Now, moving on, very important, right? Using clear and sharp images. You don't want the images you include in your portfolio to be too large, right? Because then the problem of sending it across to the recruiter or sending it across to the viewer comes in. If it's a website, it's gonna to load too slowly if you have too many fancy images. If it's a PDF, it may get rejected from your employer's email inbox. And for the sake of optimization, if you're resizing the images and making them small, excuse me, it sometimes shows across your work as sloppy, right? So ideally you should be testing your portfolio on and across all formats and screen sizes. Keeping in mind the kind of imagery that you use, not too loud gradients, not too many distracting imagery, right? Minimalistic always works most of the time. One of the biggest crimes when it comes to portfolios is showing images of work without any context, right? It doesn't matter how pretty a design is. The recruiter needs to judge how well it met the needs of the client. So make sure you include accompanying text which describes what the project brief was and how you went about fulfilling it. Ideally, you should open your projects or case studies with a mission, right? You should talk about the outcome, right? About what was the problem statement and what the outcome was. That should summarize your entire process that you've done and then put it in by the details, the process work involved, the artifacts that you use and stuff like that. Another very important thing, what was your role in the group or the team of the project that you're working on, right? So design is by its nature a very collaborative activity. And you should talk about your exact role in the group or the team project every time. You should explain exactly what you contributed, how your contribution made the project a success. And always give, remember to give you know, credits for other designers wherever it's appropriate because that, that all shows about how good a team player you were. Mm -hmm. Now, if your portfolio remains untouched for months and months, like, I mean, you haven't done any new work, employers may assume you're either too lazy to refresh it or that you haven't done any new work. So you need to find a way of updating it regularly. That can be a challenge if you're working under non-disclosure agreements, of course. I mean, a lot of clients have these strict NDAs which guide a lot of the rules saying that you're not supposed to talk about the project for a couple of weeks or months after it's finished and in the market and stuff like that. But there are always other strategies to keep your portfolio updated, such as including a side project or a blog. Pick up writing on Medium as a good way to talk about the way you, you think about the processes involved in your design scenarios and stuff like that. And something very important again, it is sometimes very difficult to spot your own mistakes, right? So make sure you show your portfolio to as many friends and colleagues as possible, to be absolutely 200% sure that you haven't let any slip ups through. And this is something which is noticeable in a, in a lot of portfolios that I've come across in the last couple of weeks, months, and years. Online on Behance, online on Dribble, even in PDFs, right? You have such beautiful designs coming up, but then you, I mean, you throw the ball out of the park by just one typo or one grammatical mistake, right? And that costs a lot. 
right? And lastly, making it easy for employers to get a quick impression of you in a short span of time by making the navigation simple, the number of projects manageable, and the amount of text that you have very short and very concise. And with that, I think we've come to an end of this, but for posterity's sake, I will go through each of these and I'll take any questions in case you guys have. So I'll now open it up for a few questions. Anybody has any questions for the stuff that we just spoke about? Yes, sir. so in the beginning, you mentioned that uh, you need to decide what uh, what y your aim is to build the port portfolio. So uh, are you mm -hmm. making it for yourself or are you making to get a job? So, yes. uh, so you have to ask yourself the question, are you doing it to impress other designers or yeah. are you doing this to impress the uh, HR or doing this to impress the project manager who's taking your interview? Yeah. Uh, so uh, isn't it always better to showcase uh, your own work? I mean, what you want to showcase about yourself instead of impressing others? Uh, sorry, Shanda, what... to, yeah. uh, sorry, Shanda, to interrupt. Uh, Hatham, please no, mute. So once you ask the question, please mute. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, Shanda, please go ahead. Yeah, so, it's, uh, uh, so, so is this a question of uh, impression versus non-impression and how to decide what I can use to impress or whether I should be bragging about my work or not? So then I would say that, yes, you should brag about what your work or what your specialty is. You should be talking about the kind of work you've done. But at the same time, more importantly, you should be backing it up with valid data, with valid information about how you did that design, right? Today, uh, you might just have a brainwave of uh, redesigning the IRCTC website, right? Tomorrow, in, in just 24 hours, you come up with a very fancy looking design for the new remodeled IRCTC design as envisioned by you and you put it up on Dribble or Behance, right? People take a look at it. People say the first thing that they, they say when they look at it is that did you test it out with anybody? Did you go out and actually use uh, the common man as a user to test out what you've built? If your answer to that is no, then that means you've actually designed it for nobody and just made a fancy design which came as a brainwave or a fancy idea to you and you set it out as a good looking visual design. Right? But if your answer to that is a yes, and that I have done my due diligence by way of testing whether this design will be acceptable by the user or not. And that involves a whole lot of UX, UI processes. Right? Once you start doing that for the kind of work that you are designing to or designing for, that itself will be making a very good impression to whoever is viewing your uh, portfolio or your resume. Right? So it has to be something with a purpose. I mean, you, I'm sure each one of you designers come up with uh, great ideas every day about uh, some random shapes in Photoshop or some random illustrations in Illustrator, right? You can go ahead and choose to include all of that in your portfolio, but it's not the content size that matters. It's the quality which matters, right? Then in that case, if you do have a lot of good artwork that you want to show around, maintain that as a personal portfolio. The rest of it in terms of the screens that you made or the project works that you did while in college or while doing an internship, that should be part of a professional portfolio. And it's always, it always makes sense to have two streams of the kind of work that you do. One, obviously the personal work that you love, the kind of colors that you like to play around with, the kind of shapes that you play around with in your personal artwork. And the other being more of the rule oriented, the process oriented work that you want to show off, which follows certain critical fundamental basic principles of UX, visual design or UI. Right? So it's good to have two streams of, uh, uh, two streams of talking about the kind of work that you do. Yes, but delineation is a must. A personal portfolio should be separate from a professional portfolio. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Great, great. Any other questions? I'll just Hello, turn my video. Any questions for me? Based on any of the points that we've been discussing so far. Uh, hi, sir. Hi. Uh, I'm Divya. So I have... Uh, hey, like... Divya. You're up for today, right? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So uh, as you mentioned in the beginning that we should be uh, very, uh, like, very specific about what we are specializing 
uh, in so uh, yes. what i wanted to know is like right now as we are learning and we are trying to explore more different areas in our work like are we inclined towards the research part of design or are we inclined towards ui part of it or something like that so mm-hmm. how do we really uh, because oh, i sometimes feel that i am quite uh, like i i am trying to explore more and more where my inclination is more towards so how do we really right now when we are at a peak where we are trying to apply for our placements and everything so how do we really know that we are inclined towards this particular thing that's a very good question divya so the unfortunately the answer for this is uh, no you won't be able to figure out immediately what your uh, main superpower is you will be able to uh, but you will be able to cultivate it starting now or starting the day you joined your particular uh, university of choice or when you started doing your design course right as as you know as everybody knows in fact ux ui is a whole set of processes right it's not just research or visual design there's user interviews there's user research there's data informatics there's uh, surveys there's usability testing there's ideation there's thinking there's brainstorming there's a whole lot of processes right and a ux designer or your ui designer you know they're not supposed to have one skill as part of the entire ux process which is supposed to be their uh, main uh, main driving force or main passion area right you find it along the way so if you are very good with visual design for example let's say if you are very good with visual design and you're doing a ux ui design course right or a master degree or a bachelor's degree in ux design right your skill or your information level of visual design is getting sharpened and honed at the place where you're studying that skill will get sharpened and honed more much much more better when you land in the field and start doing some research work for a project that you've been involved in so any project that you are involved in uh, be it in your uh, education life or in your professional life it doesn't start with the visual design right it doesn't start with you opening up photoshop or illustrator and working on the logo or working on the home page or the button screen sizes automatically right it starts with a lot of pre research work being done a lot of pre production work right so it is there that you have to focus on the skills that you learned in your education or in your college and start picking on those skills to build the project area till the part that you come to your visual design process or your inputs which are required for the project and when you come to that stage where if your visual input visual design skill is at work you will be able to go back and rely on a lot of the fundamentals that you study a lot of the research work a lot of the insights that you gathered based on the interviews that you conducted which will now reflect in the kind of visual design style that you will be doing or working on for the project right so probably then you might be able to figure out hey my visual design angle is now much more sharper much more better much more precise because i know how to get the right uh, uh, right answer or get the right feeling out from the user when he's trying to work on a prototype or a wireframe that we're trying to build for him right so it is a individual sharpening of all these small skills that lead up to something which you might say that okay this is something i'm passionate about interaction design for example right it just doesn't involve or start with fancy ui interaction design starts with a whole lot of user psychology as to why should the user be clicking here once or clicking there twice what is the uh, time of or duration of the animation that i should be playing to keep the user involved in the happy path that is being made for it right so interaction design also leans back on animation it also leans back on a lot of fundamental principles of uh, of psychology where users want to interact with something which looks like a button or which doesn't look like a button right so there are a lot of factors involved in the professional life or the professional growth path that you choose which will help you figure out and hone down on one particular skill that is your probably passion right so does that help yeah or was it too much no yeah it did help thank you sir you're welcome, welcome. anybody else we are open for questions right now and then we'll dig into some portfolio reviews after a bit hi shandar tanish here hey who's this Hello. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, hi Shanda. I'm Tanishk here. So, as hi, you Tanishka. said, hi. So, as you said, the UX process has many components in it, and you know, some projects can be very lengthy. And you know, so what kind, what kind of a length of a project should we upload or anywhere in our portfolio? So, for example, sometimes some projects can go up to twenty, thirty pages, including the detailed research and everything. So, what according right. to you is a, a usual, you know, a length for a project? Because sometimes the Oh, for example, the recruiters get uh, the project might be too lengthy, so they might not uh, look at the whole project, right? Right. So, which is why every time you present a case study or you present a set of screens that you 
want to showcase it should be backed up by a small story right that okay. story should have inputs or that story story should have segments explaining about what you have done what has your contribution been in that particular project right how you contributed towards making it better for the person who was using it how many screens you contributed that can be a number that should not be uh, so so let's say a project has uh, 250 screens and you've designed let's just 150 of them so you're not expected to put up pictures of all 150 right you just expected to put up a number saying 150 screens designed by me and then talk about the important flows summarize it summarize the important um, user scenarios that were there in, in in the flow so for example you designed an onboarding screen for a banking client or an application right and you were part of the entire onboarding experience so you can talk about how you conducted a research or a survey in the market to figure out how people are happy with their onboarding experience with the current banking apps or not and how you made use of the insights that you gathered from there and how you put that into the visual design aspect and how you put that into the interaction design and made three or four important screens so you talk about the flow of those important screens how you got the idea of that what you did with that idea how you implemented it how you tested it and that is basically your entire journey or the storyline that comes with each and every case study so it's not the number of so like i mentioned earlier it's not the content size which is important it is the quality of content which should matter right does that help yeah it does thank you you're welcome man anybody else we are up for questions nobody everybody is busy with evening coffee i think um, what we could do shandar is uh, we could move into analysis of these uh, three case studies and then probably more questions could come in sure that sounds good let me just pull up my screen and get it out of the way hang on a second All right, so you guys are seeing my screen, right? Yeah. Yep. All right, so we have uh, we're going to be grilling three people today. All right. I've been told to be as candid and honest and brutal as possible. I'll keep the last word out of it, so I won't be brutal, but I'll try and be as candid and as honest as possible. This is something I I really encourage everybody to be a part of because. it's 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 not a one man job or a one person job to review something for someone right it has to be a collective effort because it it needs everybody's point of view on it right and it's a design since it's so subjective everybody will have their points of view but it all boils down to the kind of uh, experience level they bring in with the suggestions that they have to offer so take it with a pinch of salt and i hope uh, you guys implement and use some of the uh, tips and tricks that i'm just going to be throwing away in terms of uh, uh, critiquing or giving you feedback on your uh, uh andar please uh, do be a uh, blunt uh, uh, all sorts of adjectives can be added there Ooh. i uh, we we primed the students um, that they will go through it and i'm sure that all these conversations will help them to go a uh, long way uh, in terms of their career so um, so i'm sure that none of our students would uh, feel bad about it in fact um, you know your your uh, inputs will help them to grow cool cool thank you for that support so nobody goes going to file a case on me after this is done great nice to hear that awesome so let's kick it off uh, with the first candidate for the day is divya hey divya are you here yes yes so awesome so uh, now uh, since you guys have all shared uh, your behance links with me i am assuming that this is a mix of uh personal as well as professional work because i've noticed some project works in your uh, uh pages and i've noticed some personal work so this is a mix of uh, the kind of artistic creativity that you have uh, personally as well as the kind of uh, uh, point of view that you bring uh, to the design scenario on a professional level right yes so sir. let's uh, yeah cool and i am not going to talk to you about how complete your behind portfolio or profile page is because that's obviously a work in progress for everybody right you keep on adding stuff 
you keep on uh, putting things on your uh, bio section and things like that but in terms of completion there is something which stands out in all the three design uh, in all the three students that uh, have shared their profiles with me uh, which is consistency so i noticed some good consistency but uh, when we dive deeper there is something which stands out in all three of them which is the fact that it's a little bit scattered out here right you see what i mean when i'm saying scattered when i open up your profile i see something called a resume good interesting now let's assume uh, or take on the persona of uh, a recruiter out here so i'm going to play the role of a recruiter or somebody senior enough to just uh, give you some gyan about your uh, portfolio and then we're going to take some question answers back and forth between us all right so if i have to look at this as a recruiter the first thing i notice is resume awesome great sounds good but a resume is supposed to be something which is either a pdf or a cv no worries no issue at all let me just click on this and see what it looks like so i click on that and lo and behold i get a pdf looking resume right now the whole idea of a resume is summarizing things making it easy for people to go through because they don't have the time to go through 10 pages of your beautiful artwork that you shared right now one thing which hits out which is a common uh, mistake that a lot of designers have been doing the last couple of years in all the resumes or cvs that i've been seeing is this two column approach right this two column approach doesn't work for a resume which is not a print you guys get it right because i have to when i'm reading this or when i'm scanning this i'm going this column first all the way down here then i'm going up again i'm scrolling down here and i'm reading this right I understand that you wanted to compress all of it and put it up in one page which looks nice and jazzy yes more power to you but it doesn't work that way with every information because as you can see there is a lot of stuff to go through here right you worked in a lot of places you've got a lot of interests you got a lot of internships which you're showing but then it is crammed up in one page right so give it some more breathing space chuck this column out put it in another page if you have to what you've mentioned is important yes but it deserves reading deserves reading with time and patience okay let's move on to the did you get what i said divya yes so awesome it's a good cv no doubt but it's in the wrong place and it's looking out of place right let me close this all right let's look at this one i i particularly liked this particular one and the gluco care that you had written out now this starts off very nicely where you have uh, given a scenario about uh, what you have been doing about this project right but a little bit of formatting a little bit of layout a little bit of bullet points because one sentence is ending here the other one starts off here the other one starts off here right there's too much to read very in a very tight space i i i appreciate the way that you've laid out your posters and put in uh, put it this in a sort of an infographic manner yes that's very nicely done where you're talking about the processes the processes are very nicely laid out here you've created a persona you are talking about who the user is yes you're talking about who the what the user's goals were nicely laid out and seeing all of this the recruiter might have a lot of questions for you right they say okay why don't you talk about what was going on in your mind when you were doing the user engagement for this particular project so go your time starts now what would you say to the uh, recruiter or say to the interviewer when you ask you this oh uh, so sir it was basically when i was doing my user research and when i was interacting with the users using linkedin then i was observing them uh i tried to gather few information what actually wh how did they engage themselves more and what made them more uh, like their interest line what was the ease over there so that is how i tried to point out some insights out of there okay so you're saying these are insights what brings the user to the experience ease of apply in the group chat and connection right yeah so this is an important insight so right but it's getting lost in this whole flow if it's important enough it should be highlighted in a way that it stands out right the way you've made this user scenario stand out the way you've made the motivation and the limitation or the way you've broken up the empathy map out here and the journey map right it has to stand out another thing which i find very disturbing right now is this is this trend of putting in 
uh, vertical text out here i mean this works in the print media all the time it might sound old school but people do get a headache when they have to twist their necks around and see what is written vertically it works on a poster yes but when you are scrolling through a website when you are watching this on a form factor which is very small and you really have to squint your eyes and see oh my god there's some stuff written vertically and it's think doing and phases oh now i get it so these are the column names or the row names for this right so it's a little misleading do you get what i'm saying yes sir no hard feelings okay i i really like this particular uh, uh, subway chart analogy of the feelings of the user that you've done out here very interesting work let's move on to the next one gluco care yes this is a good good project now here again remember i mentioned something about uh, grammar and language yes so yes so take a look at this this is supposed to be like a hero image or or a call out which grabs your attention initially right the opening fold of the product page or the pdf that you're building yes so right now i see diabetes management yes a very powerful term it's got my attention then i see with gluco care diabetes is no more a guess game this is the punch line for the whole thing but this right now looks very very subdued got it what you've done right now is a reverse the punch line now is diabetes management yes that is also part of the punch line but the main power lies here right with gluco care diabetes is no more a guess game so a little bit about how you weigh these two sentences and how you lay them out would add weightage to the attention grabbing factor of the person viewing it in the first shot okay the fa the 4d and the 5d method yes problem design brief group okay process followed all right language grammar drop caps you see the capital c on the continuous glucose monitor is this a device name is this the process name is this the way the machine works and it's called a continuous glucose monitor yeah it is called a continuous glucose monitor awesome i wouldn't have known that if i wouldn't have googled it but now i know it because you said it and i had googled it so there's one way of making it stand out for the user to understand that it is the name of a device how do you do that you either bold it or you put it within quotes yes sir got it because that's the name of something right and if i don't read it as a name it sounds like i'm reading it like gluco care as a continuous glucose monitor device right it's part of a sentence a part of a verb that i'm doing continuous glucose monitoring device got it so then then the important points that you mentioned here it tracks your glucose level continuously day and night you can check sugar levels discreetly right so these are two important points maybe you want to bullet them out because that will be that will be attention grabbing right the device the benefits of the device or the for the things that the device does much better than any other device in the market right now right so you should highlight what is important the process that you followed is important enough yes you highlighted that but what about the product is getting lost in this paragraph the keywords should stand out the bullet points should be there does that make sense yes sir secondary research secondary research is very very important uh, mind telling me why the lines are dropping off here and why not in here so there's a blank space out here are you planning to use it uh, with some imagery out there or is this just a layout actually i tried to follow a layout but your grid is broken i can see that the grid is broken out here right you uh, okay so if you say so but i still feel that there is a lot of white space out here that you could easily accomplish by adding meat or adding some masala with the secondary research process that you followed now these are important insights that you got right oh uh, yes sir in the diet due to diabetes right okay so these are important insights but they're looking like ctas which are just casual because immediately after that you have taken those insights and you've broken down the types of diabetes now see the importance you've been given you've given these guys you see what i'm saying visually you've given these yeah much importance but this is now like a very sad typo or a very postscript note ke ha we had 1 million deaths 2015 children with type 1 diabetes increase but this is important right so there should be some way of overpowering this rather than these two things that you there the role of insulin and glucose everybody knows about this 
your your process is not to be talking about the uh, uh, pharma domain knowledge that you have it is more to talk about the product knowledge that you're bringing right yeah so because as a hr recruiter or even as a user or even as someone who's going to do wow after seeing this i'm not going to read what uh, insulin does or what glucose does because probably i'm probably aware of it or it is probably too boring it's a medical thing that i'm not interested in right now right so always keep your users edge cases in mind when you are making anything you might have a very happy user who's like oh nice colors i like the font i like what you written but i haven't taken the time to read it right you might have that sort of a user and you might also have okay man this is too long didn't read too long didn't read what is the where is the product what are you doing you are checking diabetes i already know how to check diabetes what are the challenges yes this is important the challenges are important how should do i highlight them right and then we dive and go to the primary research research objective insights very small bullet points insights are important insights should always be glorified because the insights is that important data that you're going to use to build your product or your set of screens or your set of interactions right so insights are pretty important again some level of highlighting for the insights out here target audience yes who is your target audience everybody with diabetes a little bit of imagery here smartphone too much of text to read okay and is this on purpose your alignment fitness and health in the center medical right aligned mental yeah, health right yeah. why actually i everything was right aligned itself but the fitness and health was quite uh, bigger in size so it looks like it's center aligned okay so explain this to me again why is this right and why is this left i just uh, and, and and why is there 10 pixels here and 2 pixels here oh that is because i aligned it towards the center and then to the box and then mm. it aligned itself as the gorbor ho gaya ye to gorbor ho gaya itna alignment ke chakkar mein gorbor ho jata hai so the, so the thing is that if you are making uh, call out boxes like this right make one as the biggest size then you put in the text to accommodate the right size and you play around with the alignment and the padding to look at it from multiple perspectives so you might have one box which is 10 by 10 which has three lines of text inside the next box might also be 10 by 10 which has just two lines of text inside right so visualize the way forward in this case i think you did not visualize the way forward or you might have but you landed up saying okay eh let's give it up for now this looks good as it is did that happen with you actually i visualized think yeah yeah so you got sloppy here yeah I, like yeah. now when i'm seeing it again i can actually see it from that perspective exactly so which means that you did not did you get this vetted by somebody else once you made it did you uh, ask somebody yeah. to go through it yeah i showed it to one of my faculty okay did they point all this out Oh, uh, not really. Oops. They should. Maybe they didn't want to hurt your feelings, but I am not here to do that. I'm just here to tell you this is not a line. This is a problem. This is not good and stuff like that. So that you can work on it and better it yourself, right? And like I mentioned earlier, please, no offense to anybody's uh, designing sentiments out here. It's just the alignments, the text, and the overall look and feel that keeps bothering me. That I might talk to you about. All right. So take it with a pinch of salt. Use this constructively, and go back and refine it, and come back to me some any time you guys want to discuss uh, the rework that you've been doing. All right. So let's move ahead. You've made personas. I have a very interesting question about personas, and I think it's open to everybody. If you guys want to answer it, anybody can jump in and answer. Are these personas real? Oh, uh, actually, sir, I talk to people. So after talking to them, I tried to analyze it, and then I framed it towards the major personas. Okay, so you spoke to ten people, and then you took one person as the base average example of that, and you built the persona on that uh, criteria. Uh, not really, because uh, like personas are mostly like they are the hypothetical. Last for me. Blasphemy! You've just said something very sacrilegious. Personas are not supposed to be fictitious characters. Whoever gave you that idea deserves to be banned from the design community. 
once upon a time not long ago at least 20 years ago personas used to be fake people but now there is no such thing as a fake user you have your users out there in front of you right next to you right you have a real person who you can go and talk to about the stuff that you're building you have real people to base your survey on you have real insights which you derive from real people that you talk to so if you're talking to a group of 10 people and doing a user interview take the average of two people from there right mix and match their common pointers or the common traits that they have take the last name and the first name of two different people add them up that is your persona a real person derived from the crowd of 10 or 20 that you have been to meet oh yes when you so, say so. a fake when you say a fake persona something very creepy comes into my mind usually i'm not usually i mean the last number of personas that i've been seeing last couple of years it's always been on an average a uh, uh, a lady named jill she's 42 she lives in the us she has three cats and two children and she's divorced and she plays candy crush all day long on her phone that's a typical persona that i have been noticing across a lot of domains a lot of scenarios a lot of use cases that person is fake right you not you're never going to design for that lady you might design for somebody who's more realistic who's living right next to you who's probably had that mental model of using the app that you're you are uh, making for or her right does that help uh, yes sir but these were the people i talked to like i, uh, ah. uh, I तो ये पहले बोलते तो मैं इतना ज्ञान नहीं देता ना दीस वर द एक्चुअली पीपल दैट आई मेंशन दैट अर्लीयर फर्स्ट एंड देन आफ्टर दैट वंस यू आस ओके नो वरीज सो इफ दीस आर एक्चुअल पीपल गुड बिकॉज़ दिस इज एक्चुअल डेटा राइट यस सो 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 वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग व्हेन यू डूइंग एनीथिंग इन यूएक्स इज कीपिंग इट रियल इफ यू फेक द पर्सोना इफ यू फेक द सिनेरियो इफ यू फेक द यूजर फ्लो यू गोना लैंड अप विद अ वेरी स्क्यूड प्रोडक्ट राइट moving on let's go the design brief what now you come to the design brief after all this lengthy beautifully laid out poster come in infographic come medical diagnostic report now i come to the part which tells me the design brief is this in the right place hello is it still there uh yes so but i uh... i don't so typically the first question that people would ask you is seeing this or think any portfolio or 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 a set of screens that you built is what was this about who did you build this for right that is when you tell them okay the design brief was such and such the problem was such and such this is how we solved it and when you say this is how you solved it you go through your entire process and you explain the process that you gone through for building it do you do you get what i'm saying uh, yes sir right so the design brief is not exactly in the right place maybe maybe uh, maybe what you should be doing is reshuffle the order of stuff that you put in so you have a competitor study also that's good but i need images when i'm talking about competitor studies so let's use text how do i know yours is a little different from what they already have because i need to because as as a reviewer i would like to have an idea or a picturesque view of what is there in the market and what you are doing different get it yes sir so so i don't have to hunt for diabetes m on google and see what it does or what it looks like i don't have to hunt for life and control i don't have to hunt for dexcom if i get a visual look and feel of a card based view of these are the products and this is what they're doing and this is what we are doing differently right this is what they are doing right how different are you doing it which is what you should be explaining out uh, here here onwards right yes sir so yours is a hardware and a software solution yeah right which should have been highlighted earlier because Uh, if you're talking about more than one solution that you're bringing to the market, always emphasize the first touch point. The first touch point for this particular solution is your hardware, yeah. right? Because users would need this to work on this particular flow, right? Yes, so right. So a little bit of highlighting, a little bit of. uh laying out what your priorities are should help you clean this up because your task analysis okay these are supposed to be quadrants in the real world right boring looking quadrants or empathy maps or task analysis maps 
Okay. Right, so you list out, we list out your most important, very important, important, and least important. Right now, they just look like four uh, very random looking CTAs. Got it? Yes, so information architecture very nicely done. Health monitor. Okay, this talks about how what the flow is and the information. So and now you have your wireframes. Yes. But what flow is this? Is this the entire flow? No, it's not the entire flow. It's the flow of the main screens, actually. Like starting from login to the main first screen. use. That's called the first use, right? So it's going to be the first use where I come, I get a splash screen, I get a login or a register, I put in my details, and then it says, okay, pair your watch or pair your hardware. And then it starts looking at my details and it shows me what I have. Great. Not bad. Color and typeface. Now, this these sections, there's a name for this. Can anybody jump in and say what these are called? Style guide. Correct. Yeah. This is a style guide or a guidebook or a brand guide for the stuff that you're going to be building. And this is very important because uh, this is going to be your single source of truth for your developer as well as for all the designers. Because they'll be looking at this particular document to see what are the colors and what are the variables you use so that they can convert this into dev code, right? So this is very critical, very important where you have to list out anything and everything that is required to build the product that you have envisioned, right? And this is the part which is important, not only for yourself, but also for the developers so that they can understand how, how each thing is supposed to be looking like. Right. For example, I mean, it's typical in, in your real world scenario, you'll, you'll come across this scenario every day when you send across a design to a developer, for example, this particular uh, logo unit, right? You send this across as a PNG, developer gets it, developer puts it out on your code, he makes the app for it, he puts it on an app screen or a website screen, he sends it to you for review, you open it up in the browser and you see, oops, the color shade is two levels down. What happened? What happened in between, right? You gave him the right file, you gave him the right image. He took the image, all he did was optimize it. So the color shades went down, right? So it would not have happened if you would have given him uh, the exact hex, hex code or the RGB values for this particular uh, uh, logo unit, which he could have just coded in, which would have been the single source of truth, right? So these sort of scenarios will happen a lot. And you have to be careful about not losing your cool when it comes to designer developer handoff. So that's a very important scenario, right? And we have your final UI screens, ta-da, out here. By time, by date. I'm a little uncomfortable with the style of your by date and by time. Too much of a small. You have one week, two weeks, month. Month is in caps. Colors are good. This is a typical pharma domain color uh, scheme that you've used. Why is your title hanging out here? Is this uh, by choice or is this by necessity? Uh, no, that is by choice itself. Like it states that this is by time. Oh, so would it break everybody's heart if you just put it in one line? Uh, no. Right, because glucose by time of day. It's more like a tappable statistical button. If this is a field header or if this is a field title for this card, then it should be in one line, ideally, unless the term glucose is a medical term which can be changed by the developer and it'll become glucose, eta, meta, whatever the term might be wrong related. Right, you have to consolidate for that as well. Okay, so we've got food trackers. Sleep trackers. I hate sleep trackers. Do they work? Has anybody tried out a sleep tracker yet? I have tried it, sir. Isn't it uncomfortable? You got to keep that thing on your on your wrist all night. I mean, I think in my phone, it's just I have to put the bedtime on and it rings the alarm every day in the morning and I get a notification at the sleeping time. No, 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 not the not that one, not the app based one. So there are sleep trackers which are there on your on your wrist wearables like the Fitbit has or the Apple Watch has, right? There are wearable devices and they're a pain. 
because you got to keep them on all night. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. We've got create account, set up your account. All right, and one thing which I want to highlight here is, you start with this screen, right? Home screen, uh, splash, yeah. splash screen, right? Your splash screen comes here and here and here. And then suddenly I have a screen which has no branding on it. Is this screen looks like a broken experience now because I don't see the term glucocare. I don't see the uh, fancy looking background gradients that were there and suddenly disappeared. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? Where is the branding? It's gone except for the green color on the buttons and the fields. Yes, sir. Right. Now comes the health monitor for the Apple Watch. You've got good notification sizes. You've taken care of that. Video of analyst on a scan code is watching nature heals. Okay, so this is one good way of uh, keeping your users busy. Right. Awesome. Good job. Let's move on to the next one. So there's a couple more out here that uh, I would like to talk about, but I think I'll have to move on and, and get the other people as well. But I, I really like the way you've laid out your entire left column with uh, the stuff that you made. So this is the sense of completion that you have here. Everybody should ideally be completing this entire left section of the hands that, that uh, is there. Right. And, and uh, since you guys also have personal portfolios, I've noticed uh, some dribble links as well, but I'm not going to touch uh, the dribble uh, scenario today because that's a different story altogether. We'll just stick to your uh, Behance portfolios, right? Uh, what is this uh, abstract looking banner image in the background, Divya? Is this something you've done or is this something that uh, you just randomly put in? Uh, no, no, I had done it actually. So is it uh, a zoomed out or a zoomed in image uh, part of yeah, a... It's, yeah, it's a zoomed image. Okay. Maybe a, a, a better view would be uh, doing more justice to this because it looks kind of empty and blue right now. Okay, so based on the kind of uh, visual styles that you have done, there should be something very peppy on top of your homepage to grab the attention, right? Because as I mentioned earlier, every portfolio is unique to the person designing it. It should speak about your skills. It should speak about the kind of personality that you have. Got it? Your personality should reflect in the kind of work that you've done in the kind of colors that you've used or the kind of language that you've used in your explanation of the projects that you've done. Got it? Yes, sir. Awesome. All the best to you. Looking forward Thank to hearing you, from you again uh, with all the tips that you've got and maybe we can discuss again sometime. Yes, sir. Let's I think. Go... I... Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I think, I, I mean, it made a lot of sense because now when I'm looking at it, I'm completely looking at a different perspective altogether. And actually, I can understand all the points which you have mentioned. Awesome. Good to hear that. Yeah, sir. Thank Whenever you Whenever so you guys, in any case, if you need any more help or guidance or suggestions, just ping me, drop me. I think the Avantika folks have my coordinates and, I, and I've even added all of you guys on LinkedIn as well. So you guys can get in touch anytime. All right. So let's move on to the next person that we have. We have Tanishk. Hey Tanishk, you here? Hi, sir. Hey man, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, 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 man. Nice to see some refreshing designs mm -hmm. from Avantika coming out here. There's uh -huh. a whole lot of good work that you guys are doing. And it's it's sad that I only got to see just three of you. I wish I would, we could have done this on a more uh, lengthier session and seen some more uh, interesting portfolios. But anyway, here we are. And let's take a look at what you've done. You want to give me a little brief and understanding about the kind of work that you've done and the story behind it. And then we'll pick up each one of these screens and go through it. Yeah, sure. So basically I'm a lot into gamification, you know, and you know, small minimal interactions through animations. So basically awesome. interaction design. So that's kind of the theme I follow. For example, if it's an onboarding screen, so you need to make sure that the user understands the app, you know, before he's even got into the application. So these mm -hmm. small interactions make the user understand the app much easier and then the app is much more easier to use. So that's kind of the flow I follow. So you mentioned that gamification makes the user, uh, makes the application easier to understand for the user. 
yeah game uh, not only gamification but you know small small interactions and animations through the onboarding and making them understand right. uh, for example right. uh, a great example i follow is google's material design so it's kind of a awesome. paper design yeah so how, yeah, uh, if yeah. you hold a paper so that's kind of yeah, the thing yeah, of yeah 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 so the good thing about uh, interaction design is that it should delight the users right that's the term which is going around too much these days it yeah. should bring delight to the users gamification yeah. is one way in which you keep the user hooked yeah. onto every screen or every action right and why do we need gamification it's human psychology right for anything that you do you want some level of gratification or some yeah. level of satisfaction right people if you appreciate somebody's good work or if you appreciate somebody's action they feel better they feel happy about it and try and do it much more better for you then right so that thing yeah. in life that whole psychological action or that game gamification thing is now digitized where when a user is logging in you try to keep him engaged as much as possible right to grab his attention as much as possible to give him due feedback or credit wherever possible so that he stays on as long as possible on your app and he does all the things that is required for him to achieve his end goal by using your app right so that's the whole idea and and the whole deal behind gamification or interaction design it's not about uh, cramming it up with uh, clicks and clicks and you know bells and whistles and fancy buttons and fancy animations it's not about yeah. that because too much of that is a distraction for everybody right yeah right. too much of that can lead to a headache people can have seizures if they are clicking on a button and finding it shaking around on the screen like that mm-hmm. and there are users who react physically to certain interactions which are a strict no no when it comes to designing for accessibility and i'm sure you guys must have been taught about all this right accessibility versus interaction design you have to be very careful to the kind of interactions you are compressing into a button or a screen yeah. when you're hitting the right audience for people who are color blind how do you do that for people who are a little deaf hard of hearing how do you, how do you chain in sound sound notifications for your gamification experience stuff like that right so these are things you guys will have to keep in mind when you get into that whole wide ocean of interaction design all right so yes. let's see this i saw this show my science it was pretty interesting to to read and go through it but i had a question for you i'll just keep it till the end but let me just start going through this right so it says show my science which is sms an application to connect the hearing impaired with the world brave concept man more power to you <laughs> yeah it was actually done as a group project and then Very i redesigned good. the ui and the ux of the application here again good use of fonts good use of space but break it down into sentences this is one tight paragraph there are about 18 million indians suffering from hearing impairment finish that's one sentence the next sentence is what is the cause of the impact hearing impa- impairment prevents two or more people from interacting and understanding each other right and that's a highlight which is part of your summary so make it stand out okay right what is your aim to create an application which will help to bridge the gap between the hearing impaired and the world in what way might i ask uh, so our aim was to for example uh, whenever uh, someone who's a uh, uh, deaf for example right so they can't uh, exactly uh, go to a place and you know communicate uh, their actions exactly because the person in front of them cannot understand the sign language that they are using so we wanted to create an application for such use cases that uh, when and someone is going to a different place which uh, where people are not familiar with sign languages so they can easily make them their la- uh, sign language understand mm-hmm. okay uh, you think it is a unique thing you think it is the only thing uh, available or other people have not attempted this no i think uh, people might have uh, attempted a similar concept but then we as a group uh, thought uh, we could add some functionalities to the application which can make it a bit unique that means you did look at some other uh, uh, competitive uh, products or other players in the market right yeah we did look at some competitive products and other uh, uh, products yeah, that's, that, that's what i wanted to hear and figure out yeah great so you've got laid out your process as your steps yes right you got four steps basically design thinking processes made out more practical and you got your target audience target age you are targeting okay now pay very attention pay pay attention to the way i'm saying this okay and the way you're hearing it i come up here and i read target audience the target age we are targeting is between 16 to 65 year olds what does this mean it's a tongue twister man the target age we are targeting is between 16 to 65 years yeah i can how can you compress this sentence you get it Yeah. The target age is between 16 to 65 that's it 
yeah. target age you're targeting is too much right yeah and i am telling you once again no hard feelings no offense to anyone i'm very finicky about these things because these things matter a lot you might yes. quote up you might quote up your portfolio with some awesome visuals and some very technically sound processes but if you are reading this and if you are uh, if you have some howlers like for example this one right they really stand out they really stand out and they like they stand out like a sore thumb it spoils the whole experience okay yeah right so let's look at the hearing impaired uh, during basic desk research it was found that many what is a desk research so basically uh, this project was done during a designathon and then we uh, had to do everything in 24 hours so what we did is we just figured out and did some desk uh, desk research from different websites and uh, the uh, reviews and the uh, research is done by other designers and then we took them as a example and so, a key for our project so a better and a more user friendly term for this would be offline research okay field research field research is online research Mm-hmm. right and then you have your desk research which is basically sitting in one place and collecting it collecting all your data from 10 other places or sources and compiling it up right so that's yeah. more like an offline offline curation right? okay because during basic desk research it sounds very tacky i'm like what desk research did you do man were you sitting okay. and researching about desks or were you sitting on a desk and researching <laughs> okay right yeah uh you found that uh, many people have hearing impaired lots of problem interaction making point in places of work there and making a point what when you say making a point what is this are they aggressively trying to say hey open that door for me because i can't uh, speak or what uh, no uh, the uh, the point of uh, writing making a point was that key for example if someone is interacting and then they have to even say something to so that's right. what is so what yeah. is the action being done out here uh, communicating or communicating exactly exactly yeah. communicating for communicating right. in places of work and daily interaction making a point is saying i am making a point today and raising my hand and saying black lives matter mm-hmm. yeah right? so that's right. making a point having exactly. a conversation is something these guys have a problem with right so having a conversation yeah. or communicating basic terms keep it simple here okay sure. yeah friends and family friends and family of the hearing impaired try to learn sign so they can inter- try to learn sign language okay yeah sign is a signature or adobe sign a package mm-hmm. right yeah so sign be precise as at the same time being concise so don't have to elaborate into paragraph three lines is good what you've written okay. three lines for this and three lines is good enough right but it has to be precise so okay. that they learn sign language so that they can interact with the loved ones but yeah. learning a new non verbal language can be very difficult yes so, yeah and these were okay so here uh this you're talking about the pain points right yeah some of pain yeah. points of these two types of people who are in close connect with the audience that you're building for yes right got it all right let's move on to your feature design whenever you install an application the question you ask is hey, why should i install this okay this is the wrong punctuation mark for it yeah right yes, uh, why yes. should i install this do the features fulfill the purpose uh break it here into another line okay whenever you install an application the question you ask is who is this for i mean who is reading it are you reading it am i reading it am i reading it in the first person am i reading it in the second person am i reading it in a missing person how because it doesn't make sense so i am going through this from the recruiter's point of view and i am reading whenever you install an application so it's talking to me right yeah the question you ask is the question i ask myself is okay why should i install this yeah no, no, no. it's not okay it's, it's it's what i'm thinking inside right mm-hmm. so you have to rephrase it yeah sure the question people ask is when when you install an application the most common question that people ask is why should i be installing this okay right yeah right so it gives you that personal touch as well as bringing in a lot of people into this because mm-hmm. everybody asks the same question why mm-hmm. do i need to install this man right exactly so a little bit of rework on your uh, on your uh, sentences will add weightage to this it will make users think hey that's a good question why should i install this right yeah right then we go on to feature one which is a real time sign translator concept application ai engine which will scan the movement of the hearing impaired person signing and translate the signs to text in just a matter of seconds nice text with the sign conversion is an interaction conversation is an interaction with the person 
okay you got a howler here seamless okay. yeah <laughs> seamless and conversations where is the oh, sorry you ready where is the full stop you left it hanging yeah all right see really nice illustrations man but suddenly i come across this i'm like oh damn <laughs> yes for sure right? i need to correct it yeah really nice illustrations really nice way you've laid it out and spread it out learn sign language although the way you underlined this is a little irritating because it looks it it, it points out to the itchiness factor is this right is this wrong but i mm. guess this is a new design trend that's happening right yeah yeah no power to that <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so learn sign language i think we're done with this what is next for you in this yeah storytelling when will an app be used when will it be we have too many questions in your title here it's good to have questions but the way you're asking them is a little abrupt because here you say you see this whenever you are doing something the question is coming up got it mm-hmm. and here what you've done is directly when will an app be used when will it be required and then you say a scenario explains when the app will fulfill its purpose okay yeah so you need to um, yeah reword it a little bit mm-hmm. right yes put in put in a little bit of uh, so so here's a trick when it comes to writing anything yeah think of that sentence in your mother language first okay that's right? an interesting i guess yes think of it in your mother language first and yeah. then see whether you are making a mistake or whether you are articulating too much for it if you are articulating too much you are missing the point because okay. you have to keep it simple your mother language is the most simplest way to understand uh, anything right okay. and that's yeah. the first thing you understand more more uh, uh, more effectively right? yes right so the exactly. question that you ask or the scenario that you build think of it in your own mother language or mother tongue first okay. then you convert it into the professional or the business language that is being used in this case it is english yeah and when you convert it when you translate it you might find that it looks or sounds silly or it sounds yeah, funny right. mm-hmm. that is when you do the whole grammatical approach okay sure okay. thank you thank you that's actually a very good tip Yep. Mm-hmm. Here is a use case of replying to a stranger without any hassle. Without any hassle of what? Without any hassle of him moving away and saying, "Hey, don't waste my time," or what? No, I think it was it was just because uh, I think uh, the I think I wanted to portray that uh, whenever someone hearing impaired is sitting and uh, someone approaches him and talks to him, so he can act, uh, exactly reply, right? I cannot understand what you're saying. so that's what i was without any problems a hassle is a very tough word to use okay a very uh, heavy word hassle would imply that this guy is going and harassing him and saying hey answer me this answer me this answer me this right okay. uh, a more appropriate uh, tone of language would be uh, without any problems here is yeah. use case of replying to a stranger without any hiccups or communication hassles communication problems okay right? yeah right got it so yes. language does matter a lot here yeah it does yeah right let me use that app to reply he won't understand my sign so you are you are saying that this fellow knows sign language or you are assuming that this fellow doesn't know sign language i uh, i'm saying that he is the hearing impaired one and the person who is asking him, so in the previous illustration uh, the person is asking him a question and then in the next i have written that he is talking to himself that he won't understand my sign language so i'll just use the application and analyze my own signs okay the aim of the application is to be as simple as that i surely hope and pray so so my <laughs> money is on this if you are going to get it funded right. oh, now we come to the uh, typography and the style guide and the design system point of view okay application let's onboard you let's onboard you where into the application Mm, again you yeah. left me hanging there yeah right okay let's get you onboarded okay yeah right yeah let's onboard you this roller coaster let's onboard you this jaguar let's onboard you this uh, auto rickshaw what is this <laughs> yeah right. right so you have yes. to be precise remember precision matters because i might get waylaid and say hey man the language sucks i'm not going to hire this fellow you might have a very okay. good strong grasp of the language but you must have just screwed up on this one line right so that gives out the impression yeah, right. right okay 
and then you have real time sign yeah. translator you've got some fancy animations happening here nice real time sign language timothy language look you spelling it here gauge gauge and you spelled it here gauge gauge yeah you see that yeah yeah shit right? i need to so, correct it and yes. and there are no there are no uh, uh, convincing excuses to get away with uh, slip ups like this please yes there right? isn't yeah uh, and, and another thing to keep in yeah. mind you are using the word sign as part of your product language right the product or the brand or the or the mm-hmm. app that you're building right so why not keep it all caps yeah. or the drop cap everywhere that you use it got it okay yeah so to keep that consistency to yes out. yes consistency matters a lot yeah yeah right yeah sure right. now how does scanning work just press the record button on the application and scan convert signs to what is tct ye kya cheez hai it was supposed to be text that's a typo ah, yeah oh yeah slip up yes you got butter fingers man while you are typing you got butter fingers i need to improve it <laughs> yes you know you know why these things happen because you are not uh, are you i mean this this goes out to everybody please when you build a portfolio you're always excited to get this out in the market to publish it to let people see it right and that's where you miss out on the second revision or the third revision right revise i mean mm-hmm. i'm sure you must have revised all your answer papers before submitting it in your college days or your school days right so that same level of dedication that same yeah. level of strict discipline has to be followed in your design work as well i mean revise look for errors give it to somebody else to say hey please do a spell check on this right or hey okay. please just do sure. an alignment check on this don't be ashamed or don't be yeah. shy or don't be embarrassed to share your designs with someone else to get a better view of it to get some points which you have obviously missed right because these are very yes. obvious things which you have missed in your rush to do a good design or do a good job or you know finish it off and pack it up and publish it mm-hmm. it's human nature to miss out on this but yeah. human nature to correct that we have the option of revising it right so we have the option yes. of going back and checking it repeatedly over and over again yeah right yeah i'll be on it and then you yep yeah, i hope so and then you come to the application flow where you say let's begin show my signs let's get started onboarding text to sign language see language brother language spelling yes right sign to text text to sign learn to sign okay okay not bad and you got a good collage here show my signs then again here again so you yes. copy pasted that card everywhere with the same thing and i'm surprised as to how you missed it out but yeah, i am i am also surprised it. how i missed it out yep well now don't be surprised anymore too many surprises for you yes sir okay hope you like the project share your feedback below the link to video of full product this is not the way to give a link i should have embedded it yes of course because this is yeah. not even clickable right now man yeah right i do you expect me to copy it and then paste it in the browser or not mm-hmm. yeah nah correct yeah overall good job needs a little bit of tending needs a little bit of uh, defining yeah okay let's see your resume now fir se wahi two column see now what's happening is i'll have to read this column first then i have to scroll up again then i have to come down to this column second this works in the real world if it is a print layout yeah then you can ha- let your eyes scan and roam wherever you want to but mm-hmm. if you do it on a screen which is con- taxing and consuming for the eyeball and for yeah. the eyes and for the brain it becomes a little too much man my scanning thing is going crazy it's going up and down up and down up and down yeah right plus there's another thing which is causing a headache right now i've mm-hmm. got three different font sizes you got one font size for this one for this and one for this mm-hmm. right yeah so either stick to two or just one not more than two okay font sizes Remember, yeah okay yes or sona building ye koi skill hota hai kya i thought body building was a skill <laughs> what is persona building how do you get to that i think what i needs i'm trying to say that persona building is that i'm good at you know going out there on the field and understanding what are the main pain points of the users and building ah. persona through which no so the first sentence that you said has more weight than the last sentence that you just said 
Okay. First sentence he said is, "I go, I have fun going out in the field, talking to people, and researching things, interviewing the users, right? Yeah, right. So that's part of your user research, which you've already mentioned. Why are you breaking yeah. it up into small modules again? Okay. Right. Sure. So persona building, hata do. This is already part of your user research. Okay. What is research design? Uh, so what we uh, we had a module uh, in our college through which we learned ki how to design a proper research ki what are the steps to be taken. What are the different, uh, you know, what are the different techniques through which you can design a uh, design your research and then start conducting it? Ooh, hi, Funda. <laughs> All right. The reason why I picked out your skills is because a lot of people put in as many skills as possible, right? But they yeah. don't realize that some of these skills are part of a bigger skill out here. Yeah, right. Right. So, for example, your persona building. There's no point mentioning it separately. It's it's part of your user research, which you can talk about in more uh, in a much more glorified way. Yeah right. Got it. Mm-hmm. Wireframing and prototyping prototyping is the same activity. Okay. Okay. UI design is separate. Okay. Usability testing, separate game design is separate. Business research kya hota? Oh, so uh, one of the courses that we did in our college was business context research. So it it helped us to understand ki whenever you are, uh, for example, redesigning for a business, right? So first, how do you understand what are their what their brand is supposed to be? What is going to follow? What is the okay. main aim of the so business? so 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 the thing that you should mention out here is these are business mm-hmm. research methodologies that you have as a skill. Okay. Even research design methodologies that are part of your skill set, right? So when you explain yeah. it, say that the whole aspect is business research methodologies that I specialize in. Okay. Right. It's part of a bigger package that you have, right? Yes. Don't just throw it off with saying I do business research. Mm-hmm. Because it has a lot of value inside the way you explained it, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. Then we have UI design and iconography. Isn't iconography part of uh, user interface design? Actually, it is kind of. Yeah. Right. Unless there is a special degree for iconography in a separate course. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Illustration. Illustration. What kind of illustration? Pen and paper illustration. Watercolor illustration. Crayons. Sketch pen. Marker. What kind of <laughs> illustration? Yeah. So uh, what I mean, yeah, digital illustrations. I think I need to better term. Yeah, Yeah. that's a better better term. Yes. So 3D modeling. Okay, and game design. Game design is very huge. What uh, What are your uh, uh, skill sets in game design? So in game design, uh, basically we had a course when we did a when we did physical and uh, you know digital games both. So yeah. we learned ki, uh, for example, in digital design in, uh, in games, we learned ki wo, how to uh, design a level, how to inst- how to have uh, small small difficulties which can make the user uh, make the game a bit difficult so that the uh, user is engaged to the game. So that's the kind yeah. of thing we learned in right. digital design. Right. So that's game design and development. And there's another yeah. very interesting term for it. It's called game theory and design. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You mentioned online games and offline games, right? So that's yeah. part of game theory. Okay. Right. Yeah. Tools: Adobe XD, Illustrator, Photoshop, Figma, Sketch, Envision, Design, Maya, Unity. Very good. And then I notice exam preparation and food box. So you see how confusing <laughs> it is becoming for me. Yeah. Right. For everybody with two columns, yeah. Please get over it. So should we have so, a, like a different <clears throat> resume for or like a digital resume and a physical resume? So the physical resume course, can be submitted. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Okay. Of course. Right. Sure. So let's move on. Is there anything in this which you want me to talk about? Because I've seen a whole uh, lot of stuff. Everything you, is interesting, if, but if you, you refresh it, right? If you refresh the thing, right? I've uploaded a new project yesterday, so I think uh, it'll be great if you yeah, go through it. Right. Like I did it yesterday. Um, only, yeah. Shandar. <clears throat> yes. Shandar, sorry. In the interest of time, can we move to Avantika's uh, portfolio? Because oh yes, after, after her sorry, reviewing the time, yeah, it's only. Yeah, after yeah. her reviewing, we'll also have question and answer. Okay, no worries, no worries. Sorry, uh, Tanish, we'll have to skip you for now and uh, get on to the next one. I did not realize it's already yeah, 7.20. Sure. Uh, all it's right. Okay. So Thank you for the feedback. Have, hey, you're welcome, man. You're welcome. Next, we have Avantika. Hey, Avantika. Hi, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good for now. <laughs> okay. So, I doubt so did, I'm they good. Name the, did they name the university after you or did you name yourself after the university? Yeah, it's actually my university, so like. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Good job. 
Very yeah. good. So let's take a look at uh, the stuff that you have. You want to tell me a little bit about uh, the kind of uh, things that you've involved yourself in? And yeah. Then we can so pick it up. Uh, I'd like to point out one fact uh, is that I'm actually a communication design student. Ooh. So I haven't gone into depth of learning of user experience yet, but I am inclined towards it and I want to be doing more work in it, which is why I think um, I shared my re- uh, portfolio here to get reviewed so that I understand how a hybrid like me would uh, have to shape her uh, portfolio to go out in the industry. So that's about it. Awesome. That's good. That's great. Let's let's take a look at some of the work that you've done, right? And I think red has to be your favorite color because there's flashes of red all throughout, right? I think it's something okay. that has happened very uh, subconsciously. It just mm-hmm. happened. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll start with the big ouch. The yeah. big ouch being that this is again a two column layout. Two column, yes. I got that <laughs> straight. No down. offense, but if you can sort it out because uh, yes, I'm yes. having the same problem here again. I notice O&M and then I notice ad business and then I notice placement committee. Right? Yeah. Because I'm scanning this way. I'm scanning this yeah. way. I'm not scanning that, yeah. that, 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 right? So this is something which is very basic, very fundamental. You guys right. should be taking this. Right. right. Yeah. Because when I'm reading this as a two column thing, another very important thing that's happening is I am missing out on, on the important uh, things that you might have probably wanted to highlight. So here, when I did a scroll up and down, I missed out something which I just saw again and realized that it is important. What was that? Your achievements. The ones you've yeah. written down here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it got lost in the scroll. A, because it is right at the end, I think that it might not be that important. B, because it is situated at the end of two columns and it has a smaller font size. Right? Do you see that? Right. Yes, yes, yes. Right? So this threw me off a bit. Okay? Noted, yes. Awesome. So let's get this. Let's go ban karte hai. And let's do the Prabodhan Blood Bank. All right. Good project. I like the use of the visuals that you've done, but a few things that I'll point out again. Take it with a pinch of salt. All right. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> the first thing that comes to your uh, view is the name Blood Excess. Right. Right. Yeah. I like the way you've used the font, but I notice a discrepancy or a glitch or a continuity error which is out here right the x being yeah yes yeah I've so noticed is this that. the way it, yeah. is this the way the brand should be named or is this the way the brand should be named um it the x is supposed to be bigger uh there was a there was a different logo that was used there was a little bit of discrepancy there but i yeah i'll make sure to edit that yeah yeah good so here you've used two lines to talk about what this thing is, right? What is this? BloodX is a B2B platform that aimed at created a standard database. Too many things happening here. First, too long a sentence, which is talking about too many things. Second, a few grammatical errors out here. BloodX says it's a B2B right, right, platform right. that is aimed yeah. that is aimed at creating a standard database yeah. as the availability and requirement of blood. I would still suggest right. you break it up into two lines, right. like keeping your grammar and your flow intact. Right. right? After all, it's, it's a bloody matter, right? And a very important yeah. matter, right? right? Okay. So then we go on to what is the phase one, phase two, phase three? Um, we actually had a lot of, uh, like we had iterative processes across two years uh, in creating this project, which is why the, I've break, broken it down into phases. So, so that it's like a, a better way to understand the story. That's because you're telling it to me now that I know that this is a better way to understand it into the story, right? Yeah. <laughs> so when I see phase one, phase two, phase three, I'm assuming that you you are going to be breaking up the product life cycle into three phases. Right. Right. Which is also the case, but it just comes across too abruptly for me. Get it? Right. Right. Yes. And again, another thing out here, please. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, couple of lines here, which can easily be compressed and line much more uh, easily, much more soothing for the eyes because here I'm dancing. I'm going here, right. I'm going here, I'm going here, I'm going here. Right? Again, this is good for the print media where you can go all out crazy with the alignment and the font sizes and stuff right. like that. People don't give a damn. But for the web, it's attention grabbing that matters. If I read this and I'm taken off in the first five seconds, I'll just run away. Right? Yep. 
and you guys do know the rule right the 5 second rule of uh, people staying on your website and sticking around if they like it if they don't they just drop off right you have yeah. to grab your users attention in the first 5 seconds yeah right so think of that aspect in terms of your uh, portfolio as well right because there's some very good work that all three of you and the rest of you have done it just needs to be polished up a little bit more okay so now there's another big visual jerk that is happening to me nice soft corners and nice soft borders uh, and even uh, shadows behind right yeah with blurry suddenly i get mm-hmm. a three dimensional raised button this looks clickable can i click on it <laughs> no. no right right now these three phases which were just standing hanging here with uh, bad alignment space here and bad alignment space here and wrongly aligned on the top as well do you notice that yes these are not uh, vertically aligned to the top and even uh, distributed properly yep okay so some clean up required there some consistency in design language is required here right right you got phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 three chunky blocks of text then suddenly phase 1 becomes so beautiful the origin first belief and desire research right right I have no doubt about the kind of quality of research work that you guys have done. It's good, right? But I'm only a little concerned about the way you are presenting it. Right. Right. Even in this case, this is not aligned to this. This is not aligned to this. The tops are not aligned. They are not in one straight line. Right. I think right? Uh, in, in terms of this project, I uh, revised it right now a couple of like a couple of hours or days ago uh, for this review. So I think there's a lot of vetting that is missing here. which i will be doing now post this awesome. as well great great i'm looking forward to the revised version of this yes sir all right then we move on to the research phase where you have put it up like so this is the research insights that you got yeah this right yeah. Little... yeah these are the insights these are the important insights that we took forward in the project this looks like an infographic tell you something this uh, red blood corpuscles corpuscles spelling errors okay corpuscles is not the way this is spelled mm-hmm. so you got three bullet points which is part of this yes that's under that that makes sense mm-hmm. they, they look like two separate units right so there is a lot of data here which is important data which is important insights but it's it's like just thrown there for me to figure out which is important and which one should i prioritize reading you get okay. what i'm saying yeah it's jumbled up yes okay solution blood excess okay solution idhar hai aur solution features idhar hai man you'll give me an i ache why b to b again layout a little bit of is this the logo yeah. that you have made for this yeah Wow! Why didn't I see this here? Because it wasn't here. That should no, be there. No, I, I only put the right? word mark of it. Yeah, I didn't put the logo no. mark. So now you're confusing the user again. So is the product based on this, or is the product suddenly materializes, evolves, and becomes this? Consistency. Yes. Right. Yes. Because this is a reveal that you're making later on to me, which should right. have been revealed here itself. Yeah. unless you are teasing the user and saying hey there's much more good stuff lined up right at the end of this long document right, right? Yeah. that is not the case i hope no okay good so let's move on ha kaha the hum log solution ho gaya interface interface one gap here clean up when you're cutting your images look at this you right. got your right na ye kaun sa phone hai bhai sahab itna khicha hua kaun sa handset hai ye i think it got I have, don't know how that's happened. I think that's an error because that's not. Yes, it is. It is aspect ratio has been stretched beyond comparison. Right. I like your screens, but I'm not too happy with the way they have landed up out here, being distorted because it's all gone for a toss. Your alignments, your layout. Yeah. And 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 coming to the fact that you were a finalist for Design for India 2018. Right. This should be more aggressively highlighted. right right i think i was also part of the session when this happened design awards went 2018 i had a session that day at uh, the nascom event as well right. i might have met most most of you guys but anyway 
Phase two. Phase two. Yes, again, text, please. Please reevaluate the number of lines or the, the yes. content that you're putting in. Okay. Just for the sake of design and alignment and justification, this doesn't do it justice right. at all. Right? Yes, I understand everybody's a design student out here, but it doesn't mean that everything has to be designed and designed. Sometimes the most minimal of effort on a design on a design or like this would go a long way to, you know, being right. easy for people to understand, being easy for people to read. All right. Okay. Yep. Revised interface. Now, to be very honest and frank, the size of the interface, the screenshot that you used, when I first saw it, looked like the Vodafone ka billing screen. <laughs> right. Because of the red teardrop logo shape and the red, red, red. Right. Right. Now the whole branding exercise has become Vodafone. Right. Right. So what do you need to do on this part? You need to blow up the screens a little bit more. You need to add a little bit more of a visual element to your screens. Right. Because right. they look like wireframes to me right now. Right. Right. And then phase three. Phase three, phase three, phase three. Again. System. The text. Yes, it was a standard system that was translated into a application, into an application. Okay. And then you come yeah. down to your final interface. So the which... call must be having a ball of a time right now because I'm not really known for making grammatical errors, but I have no Oops. idea how that happened here. And you should have given me a fair warning. I wouldn't have been so harsh on you. Yeah? <laughs> no. It's okay. Everybody makes so these things. Man. The first time. Looking That's forward. okay. I'm at... Yeah, yeah. No worries. See, I really like your concept and the flow of the screen, but the way you presented it is a little jarring for me because right now, again, I see some very nice looking phone holders with nice looking screens, but I am unable to see what's happening inside the screen. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? It's too small for comfort right now. Right. Right. Why do I have to click in and zoom in and click in and zoom in? Sorry. Why shouldn't it just be accessible to me like a set of cards, which is opening up one after the other, like the way you've laid these out. Get it? Right. Future scope, business plan. Okay, and these were your partners in crime? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Good job. Good job in terms of the visual aspect of the product that you built, but a little sloppy, I would say, on the uh, the way you laid it out. Presented, and I yes. think once you fine tune it, it'll, it'll go on a different level altogether, right? So all the best yeah. to you, more power to you. Yeah. All right. And let's yeah. look at one more thing before we open up for questions. Which one do we take? Let's look at flipping over. This reminds me of Angry Birds on a mutated level. Uh, that was kind of the client brief as well. Because this was a, yeah, yeah. A, out in the market. That's why it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, I know this is probably a visual design style or a trend you guys are following, but uh, this is your uh, viewport size, viewport area for your uh, screen, right? The first fold. Yeah. And then I scroll down and boom, very small font. Yeah. And then again, sentence per sentence, sentence per sentence. So either break it up into bullet points or some level right. of visual layout for the text as well. Right. Again, grammar, a virtual world could be about civic issues or seeing the art around. Uh, seeing the art around is... Um, I don't understand. Is it appreciating art around you or is it appreciating art that you see around yourself? What is it? Around yourself uh, when you're ah. in travel or... Right. So a little more contextual, please. Right. 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 Hyperlocal augmented reality social network. Social and network in caps. The S and right. Logo. Incredibles ka logo hai. Yeah. You've seen the movie Incredibles? Yeah, I have. I have never you noticed. Just twist. You twist this around a little bit, distortion, and it becomes incredible. <laughs> but good job on this. Your arcs are way above your grid lines, but I guess that's on purpose. Kepi Garu, nice characters. Final characters. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so here's another thing. A lot of fancy animations have been used by people in their... Uh, 
things, right? Now this works if you are redirecting your user to a Behance website to see it online. But if you want to pack this up and send it as a PDF, mm -hmm. it's going to be very heavy. It will be very, very okay. heavy, right? So always keep in mind that you might have to edit, you might have to customize, you might have to summarize, you might have to tone down uh, the visuals, the language, the animation in your uh, resume, bio data, portfolio for a different audience, right? Right. Right. So always keep in mind two versions of something of your portfolio. One, the light version, which you can share with, with people and then ask them to redirect to a particular website, in this case, Behance, where they can see the enhanced version full of the interactions and the animations, which are right. pretty intensive, right? You use the same phone frame again here. I think that was a different phone. <laughs> Ooh, no, I don't think so. This is that this okay. is that irritating side two point five D curved glass phone. Yeah. yeah. It's so wrong and against usability. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you made it like a mini yeah. Pokemon Go. Yeah, I think majority of the UX end of it was done by the company, and I I only worked on the UI for this. Right. So for the UI, uh, one point of view, one thing which is very important, font sizes. Right. Your username font size here and this font size, it's not consistent. Right. Right. Okay. Looks good. Cool. Not bad, yeah. Not bad at all. Just pay attention to the, the little things that we spoke about and you can probably right. revise it again. Right. And I think we are at the end of the hour. It's 7.38. So any questions, you guys, I'll be opening up for questions right now. Let me stop sharing my screen. Rohit, all yours. You want to take it away? I, I'm sure there are going to be uh, quite a few questions, but we'll take a couple of them. Uh, students, you can unmute and ask the question. Uh, make sure that before you ask your question, uh, you share your name as well. Yes. Your name, your credit card number, and everything. Sure, here you go. Get ready to write. <laughs> all right. All right. First of all, name is Pyle. Credit card number hey, is a bunch of digits. And then the same okay. goes for the expiry. All right. All right. Shut away, it. but not beyond 10,000 rupees per month, okay? <laughs> Gotta save up. Uh, okay. I'll have to think on that. All right. <laughs> you won't be able to afford much with that money, but you know, you can, you can <laughs> buy like a couple pizzas. It's better than nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And send, send a couple of donuts your way. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> All right. Um, here's an odd question. It's not really portfolio related. It's more in terms of jobs. Mm -hmm. um, so like, especially in India, it's more common to kind of just like show up for your job, right? You don't really do remote work as much. Or it, it hasn't been as common, right? Until the pandemic. Mm, but, uh, well, this, this year has totally shifted people's perspectives about how they work and what is expected out of their job roles and profiles, right? This yeah, year has become like totally topsy-turvy, right? Everybody uh, is on work mm -hmm. from home and people have realized that working from home is a trend that's not going to go away. And um, do you personally know many companies or even in your own that would do that, whether it's just a company or just a small design firm or something for um, people that are not as able-bodied to even be, you know, forget coming to work, but like they can't even sit up at times and like this is not really something more uh, most companies think about here at the moment so it's hard to even like bring mm. this up to hrs no this is this is i think i think uh, uh, you haven't been talking to the right set of people out here because mm -hmm. this 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 is a very sensitive topic and has been uh, taken into consideration by a lot of companies i'll give you a few names for that for that matter uh, there's these companies that i visit and i talk to design teams out there and i talk to designers and do a lot of trainings and workshop sessions and I have seen the proper accessibility set up for uh, people who are not able-bodied who can come into work or who don't want to come into work, right? So companies mm -hmm. like Adobe, companies like Google, companies okay. like uh, Capgemini, Cognizant, Accenture, Deloitte, they, they do take into consideration a lot of these aspects uh, for, from the professional point of view because they have realized that not everybody is able to you know, land up for work, mm -hmm. right? I might be more comfortable not walking to work or not going to work by just you know, lounging around and doing work from home, even if I'm not 100% fit or even if I am 100% fit. But right. that shouldn't affect the way I work or the, that shouldn't affect the way my infrastructure has been set up for me to showcase my professional capabilities. And companies are helping people out a lot in this uh, 
so, so just because this year happened, which was crazy for everybody, right? Uh, a lot of companies, uh, where I work, Adobe, Adobe has been very nice and very kind for, for each one of its employees. They have given us a work from home fund, mm-hmm. a couple of hundred dollars where we spend that money on buying accessories for ourselves, for our work related issues or setting up a work desk, or setting up a work practice much more better at our homes, right? The companies are uh, taking care of their employees this particular way. And a lot of other initiatives being taken by Google, like I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Google has two days, uh, two days in a month off for uh, people with disabilities. Oh. I'm not too sure what kind of uh, the disability method is required for this, but there's two days a week off if you uh, have certain disabilities which affect your work. You can choose to work from home uh, for as long as the project demands as or as for as long as your physical uh, condition demands. So people are opening up to all of that. Uh, there is awareness, awareness that is happening. It might be a little slow because uh, we never had the opportunity to address all of these issues earlier. But uh, given the scenario that everybody is facing this year and hopefully next year it might get sorted out. But uh, this is going to be around for a long time where people are not going to be actually on the job job, but doing it from wherever they can at their comfort uh, uh, levels or places of work. Right. And uh, in your professional opinion, what's the right time to even discuss? disclose that when you're submitting a job application or when they're willing to give you an interview? When you are giving an interview. Okay. Okay. Got it. And right, that's when you are talking. Mm-hmm. That's when you are talking to the person who's giving you the job. Uh, when you're putting in a job application, it's a blind thing, right? Yeah. You're yeah. sending it out to anybody. All right. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Others? Questions? Yeah, so hello sir, uh, Mayur is the same. Uh, I am a product designer. A student. Hey, yeah. uh, so I had a question like uh, in our projects as well, uh, we have a certain UX research work which we do for de- designing any product. So is it a good thing to include it in our portfolio as well? Of course, of course. Uh, Anything, any work which you have been part of which has an impact, right? which has had an impact on the user, which has had an impact on the domain, you should be mentioning it. You should talk about it, right? You should explain about what was going through in your mind when you were thinking about the process or when you were trying to solve that problem, right? It's, it's the openness that you bring to the table that should matter, not just a few bullet lines which you can explain by just reading it out, right? You should talk about the kind of work that you've done about the hardships you faced, about the problems you faced, about the successes that happened. Yeah. And uh, like, in, uh, it's like, can you just highlight in what detail should we uh, mention the UX research work which we have done? Because since our focus would be on product. Uh, right, right, right. So, so when you start any research work, you already have your end goal in sight, right? You have your business goals defined already. And you know that your business goals have to tie down with your users end goal, right? So, <clears throat> so you should mention uh, the, 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 the impact that you made with the research, the insights that you gathered, the important ones, right? You should mention your contribution, the way it helped ease out the work or the way it helped ease out the screens that were being built by your designers or your developers as such, right? Yeah, thank you, sir. You're welcome. No, I, I just found out the chat window out here. Okay, we've got people chatting. Yes, somebody said hello. Hello. Yes, sir. I'm Kriti Sina. I'm pursuing master's in communication design. So I, hey, Kriti. I would like to ask that uh, since uh, master's is a, just a two years course and we don't have so much projects to put over there in our portfolio, there, uh, the work is very precise. So will it be an issue yeah. for us people to, you know, regarding the project? No, no, I, I don't think it will be an issue as long as you have content that you can lean back on and talk about. So you can always mention stuff that you haven't added in your uh, set of screens or portfolios that you can say that, hey, I was also involved in something like this, which is not part of the storytelling that I'm doing right now. But this is how I contributed. This is the impact that it made and stuff like that. Right. Okay, and I have one more question. Uh, 
since uh, sure. i have uh, did my i had did my uh, graduation as an engineer so will it be relevant mm-hmm. to uh, portray some of my skills from that field in my resume of course of course your your resume so so here you mentioned the term resume right it resume is a collection of everything that you've done in terms of bullet points in terms of paragraphs of text in terms of the skills that you've acquired along the way right so that you should be mentioning it with with a whole lot of zest and a whole lot of uh, you know enthusiasm okay thank you so much you're welcome who's next Yeah. Any more questions? One last one. Um, hi. Uh, this is uh, Swarali Hindekar, and uh, uh, I am. I've uh, chosen industrial design as my field of uh, specialization. Uh, okay. So um, I wanted to ask you about. So as an industrial designer, if I'm um, wanting to work in the UX team of a certain company. Uh, mm-hmm. would i include would i would it be okay for me to include uh, you know industrial design projects uh, would, because um, a lot of my projects would be industrial design and less of ux so do i create more pro- projects in ux and then put them up in my portfolio so that companies you know um, can see that side of me or how do i go about it yeah that's a good question so companies are looking at people with multiple types of skills right and multiple types of uh, uh activities they can engage themselves in productively right so you mentioned uh, industrial design that happens to be a skill set that you have yeah and then you're also going into ux and ui design right it's good that you showcase the different levels of critical thinking that your mind is capable of in terms of skill sets that you have acquired along the way it's a good thing to mention all the extra sets of uh, skills that you bring to the table as well but uh keep in mind uh, that you should not be reprioritizing your uh, skill sets level a lot so in in your example if you have studied design as such right and if if you specialize in one particular form of design you should prioritize by talking about that particular stream or that level of skill that you've acquired along the way and as a complement to that particular skill you can also talk about the extra left handed or right handed brain approach that you have in terms of industrial designing or other skill sets that you uh bring across as an accessory or as an accomplishment to your current skill sets uh, does that help yes it does just can i have uh, ask another follow up question so in yes. case like i have an industrial design project and i showcase mm-hmm. my research work because i'm aiming to uh, get into a ux team with that work yes if you're aiming to get into a ux team which means you are obviously looking forward to do a lot of research yes you should Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, Shandar, I'm sure that we can go on with the questions. Um, oh yes, there are going to be too on, many on, of on. them. So um, I think we should um, we should you know uh, uh, all this uh, of uh, here. Uh, I'm sure the students can reach out to you uh, on your profile. Uh, yes, request and, and I'll just add to that. Yeah, I'll just add to that. I have recently started an. Uh, Uh, a series of ask me anything sessions on linkedin and facebook and the next one is coming up on the 12th of uh, september and there is a link which i have posted also in one of my posts which has a, a registration form for people to sign up and ask me questions so in case you guys are interested in participating in these uh, uh, biweekly episodes that i have on ask me anything on design ux and ui please go ahead fill up that form put in your question and i'll invite you to that session which is happening every two weeks so if that's uh, up your alley you guys interested let me know and uh, and i think you guys can go ahead and add me on linkedin and facebook and every other social media where you can get a hang of me because i do a lot of posting and uh, uh, stuff that i share out uh, regarding design ux ui adobe and adobe xd as well so yeah super i think that would be good uh, you'll also have a bunch of our students reaching out to you for another yes. interesting yes. activity yes. that we are doing and um, they'll take it uh, ahead separately thank you so much for awesome. uh, doing the shandar arnav over to you thank you very much rohit having you over yeah, just a moment we'll have arnav calling you uh yes thank yeah. th- th- thank you sir so thank you so for uh, taking out time and being a part of our portfolio review session today 
Uh, sure. Thank you so much for just coming. before we sign off, before we sign off and we say bye bye and we finish all the formalities, I hope you got my bank account number and you're doing the transfer right now. Um, that's going to take a while, but I am working on it. And uh, maybe like as soon awesome. as I'm reviewing my CVN portfolio, I can just send the confirmation button, you know? Awesome. <laughs> Great. And I don't, I don't expect uh, or accept currencies. I expect uh, Bitcoin. So if that's up your alley, please. Um, I'll have to get, I'll have to contact my brother for that, but uh, okay. I'll get it done. Don't worry about it. Awesome. In case you guys want that. to get a good angle to that, if you guys want to check out my portfolio, you have to pay a Bitcoin. So I'll just share my screen and show you something uh, which might just, you know, lighten up the scene. And if you are interested in uh, talking about your portfolio, there's one trick which can get more people onto your website. So this is my website. Okay. And I have been working with a lot of clients for the last 20 years, which involve a lot of NDAs. So I've had to sign a lot of non-disclosure agreements. And every time I apply for a job or when I used to, people used to ask me, hey, show me a portfolio. And I'm like, I can't show you a portfolio unless you give me an arm and a leg and a ear and stuff, stuff like that. So I went ahead and I closed it all down. And now I charge people a Bitcoin to view my portfolio. So if this interests you guys, you guys might want to just take this up Do as a way of interacting with the users. <laughs> Do you actually yes. charge? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. yes. And, people and there you? are people who've paid up. There oh are my people God. who've actually, who have actually gone in and got a guest account made up with my website and have actually given Bitcoin. But um, then that's a different story for some other time. I don't see the financial aid option. Where's that? Oh, that comes in when I send you the uh, payment gateway options. Okay, I'll wait for that. <laughs> see you All right. Night. All right. Thanks everyone. Thank you very much. It's been great talking to you guys. I hope to catch you again soon. Please stay connected. Add me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and then we can continue our conversation. All right. Thank you so much for doing this, uh, Shandar. Looking forward to staying connected. Yeah. And, take care, uh, everyone. Exploring opportunities. Yeah. Stay safe. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank, Thank you, sir. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.